Hi guys, it's Darlene. Okay, so I'm going to give you an update because everything has been laid out. We've made all the decisions thus far that we know of. So let's talk about it. I will just say this. And there are many options. Each breast cancer is different. Each person's, what they're willing to go through is different. So for me, um, I've met with two, I met with two surgeons. Um, I met with an oncologist. I met with a plastic surgeon, I've been a busy girl. And um, I decided to go with the group here in the Woodlands. This is where I live. The other surgeon was in the med center. Just so happens that the surgeon here actually trained under the one in, um, in the med center. So uh, they think quite highly of her as do uh, uh, surgeons that my husband works with and in meeting her I think very highly of her as well they're with the Texas breast specialists uh, here in the woodlands and so what's great about it is that um, I met with the um, oncologist for that appointment took about an hour and then I asked all the questions and really an oncologist I've learned quite a bit an oncologist really deals in the chemotherapy or and or hormonal therapy uh, part of this uh, journey um, where so if you need radiation there's another doctor if you want plastic surgery there's another doctor the nice thing about this facility um, this group of doctors is that uh, they handle everything for you so I met with dr. Ryan first and I immediately liked her um, I talked to her for at least an hour told her my concerns with doing hormone therapy I thought uh, with my type of cancer that we didn't even have to worry about chemo, but that's not quite off the table yet. Um, uh, we won't know until after surgery and we do the biopsy on the tumor itself um, and we do the genetic testing and I'll explain. Um, so what we, uh, so I met with um, Dr. Ryan and then I met with Dr. Hook and the thing about Dr. Hook, well I, I like both of them, the thing I really like about Dr. Hook and their, the way that their facility is, I explained why I didn't want to do radiation. There's many kinds of radiation therapy. Um, and then we discussed uh, mastectomy. And um, what was interesting to me is, um, you know, uh, well, there's a lot of things that were interesting to me, um, is that if I do the mastectomy, then I realized, well, there's no chance of the cancer coming back in that particular breast. I wouldn't need to do five weeks of uh, radiation therapy. So there was, there was a lot of choices to be made. I didn't want to do radiation therapy, so, um, my choice was then either we do the lumpectomy and no radiation, but then there's a 37% chance that the cancer can come back versus an 8% chance. Those were big differences. So if we did the mastectomy, I wouldn't need to do the radiation and there's a 0% chance that the, <laughs> that the um, cancer can come back in that breast. So um, I, she said, why don't you meet with the plastic surgeon and talk to her, and then you can meet with the radiation oncologist and talk to him. So I met with the, two days later, I met with the plastic surgeon who specializes in breast reconstruction. Love her, sweetest thing on earth. Um, it was an easy, easy decision for me to choose the, ma the mastectomy, and that's what I've chosen. So I'm gonna have the mastectomy. Um, they will do, so I, for those of you that want to, I don't know how much y'all want to know, so I'm just going to say it, you know, <laughs> again, this isn't for you, pass on by. Um, so what I've chosen to do is, to, after meeting with everyone, I didn't even need to meet with the radiation oncologist because I knew after speaking with Dr. Redman, who is the plastic surgeon, um, she's pretty funny and sweet because she says, I get to do the good stuff. There's bad stuff, and then I get to make great boobs you know basically is what it comes down to you know it's like something horrible has happened but she gets to be the person that puts it all back together if you will um so here's what we're going to do my surgery will be on june 20 excuse me july my surgery will be on july 24th i have several appointments beforehand to do pre-ops for both surgeon and so this is how it works i've had the genetic testing done i had it that day the genetic testing is where they look at 
oh, I don't even know how many uh, gene sequences for uh, cancer, but they look at a lot of them. And it tells you a risk. So that's like the BRCA1 and BRCA2 and things like that. Um, that all would also help know whether my daughters would need to be tested and they do not so uh the other thing about dr hook i love and i use her name and i'm going to tell you her name because gosh i hope not but if you ever need um an excellent uh surgeon um these are some of the things that i like about her thus far uh, she gave me her personal email address have any questions i email her and she emails me within 24 hours she called me personally to tell me the results of the genetic testing they set up the appointment for me for both um, the plastic surgeon and the radiation oncologist um, kind of amazing uh, you really just don't need to do it they take care of it all they take some of that burden off of you of having to try and find this person that person because what I have learned is you need a team a team of individuals no matter what you choose to do whether you choose radiation whether you choose mastectomy whether you choose to have reconstruction whether you choose to have chemo whatever it is you need a team and so that's it's nice that um, I, I like my team <laughs> you know I have a good team so far so uh that's what we'll do we will um there's several things that will happen uh the day of the surgery my surgery is at around noon so at nine in the morning i go in and i will have a radioactive kind of material injected into my boob and um uh, you know they'll do all the pre-op stuff uh dr redmond comes in she's the plastic surgeon she'll mark you know everything and where um They'll be doing it underneath, so the the uh, the, the um, incision and everything will be under the breast, so it won't be visible. Um, uh, so they go in, and uh, at the time of surgery, they knock you out. Obviously, put you to sleep. At that time, they'll inject then another dye. So we have a radioactive dye, and then we have a blue dye and uh there are two the the reason for those is you're they need to make sure they want to find the sentinel node which is the node closest to the tumor this is sort of a a double way of checking to make sure they truly do have the sentinel node because they really don't want to take more lymph nodes than they uh, have to because you can get something called lymphedema and we don't want that it's where the lymph nodes aren't where the lymph system isn't working and it's not an easy thing to fix if they could even fix it but we're not going to go down that road we take each step so um once they inject the dye uh dr uh, hook goes in and removes all the breast tissue tumor everything um, once um, dr. hook removes all of the breast um, it is a skin and nipple sparing surgery so um, you know it's just kind of like going in it'd be kind of gross I guess but going in and skipping it all out it's breast tissue it doesn't matter to me so we scoop it all out and get that sentinel node and then uh, dr. Redmond so then they take the tumor and they send it off for what's called genomic testing and that tests for something like 21 cancer type genes that it tests for so for instance it would say oh you have a I pray this isn't going to happen but a 95 percent chance it'll go to your liver or your lungs or this or that or whatever so they do that type of a testing we expect it to come back perfectly fine um but if it did not and there was a higher risk so you will be put in a category of low moderate or high if it's high chemotherapy will need to be done if it's low no we fall into the middle because of my age we would then not do the chemo because it would put me sort of in the low because of my age dr redmond comes in and she works her magic she goes in and they put in a, a spacer it's sort of like a temporary uh breast implant everything's sewn up and i stay oh and she puts in a nerve blocker um for that will help with pain for three days we go we stay i stay overnight to make sure the pain is not an issue and then um there'll be two drains they uh 
will stay there. Uh, one week later, I go in and see her. One of the drains will come out. She will add more air to the desired consistency that I like. Uh, once we have that desired consistency, then she will fill it with saline. And on that second visit, she takes out the second pump or second uh, little drain, uh, assuming everything is going well. Nothing else except to recover, and that will take about two months to three months. So the second surgery, there will be a second surgery. The second surgery will be a lot simpler. Uh, we will be putting breast implants in both breasts, and we will be giving them each an equal lift so that they are lifted and perky and they'll be doing a little liposuction so that they can fill you know when you were younger how you had that nice little fullness here they do that as well it's so hot you guys uh, all right so then once all of that part is done and we've rec we're recovering from surgery one um and we're recovered and everything um you know we will have to then discuss taking a hormone uh, basically inhibitor uh, now tamoxifen is used when your ovaries are working and producing estrogen mine no longer produce estrogen um, hence metabolize so I will be taking a hormone replacement or a hormone therapy called armitase which one we choose I don't know we don't do it for about six to eight weeks after once I'm healed we go in for the second surgery the second surgery is the true cosmetic part of this we take out the spacer or temporary implant that goes out the new implant goes in uh, a lift is uh, we do a lift uh, it's uh, th this is gonna be very very simple uh, because we're doing it above the muscle we're not there's no reason to have to go under um, we're gonna give a tiny little lift I don't have to droopy of boobs I guess so it's just a really it's just a little tiny little lift um, so we're gonna do it on both sides and we're putting implants on both sides and we are taking some of my own fat <laughs> got plenty of that a little liposuction and do that fullness you know when you're younger how you have that fullness right here basically make a nice pair of boobs so this is a very mentally challenging uh, disease if you will uh it, it it just sucks shit and uh so for me there's a few things that have helped me i've talked about this in a previous video um you know church has helped me a lot um it's helped me tremendously more than i could ever think try to maintain a positive attitude i don't always you know sometimes i'm a true pain in the ass and those few times where i'll just have an emotional breakdown for you know no particular reason um, but one of the things that I try and look past is I say, okay, we're here at surgery. I know it's going to be a hard recovery mindset. I go in going, okay, they're boobs. They're nothing but tissue. I've had my thyroid removed, um, which regulates a lot of freaking crap. And so it causes massive problems. They're boobs, you know, I'm, Give me another pair and I'm perfectly fine. Um, and that's the truth about it because, and I'm not trying to um, negate how devastating this is. I just have to, for my own mental well being, is I look at it as these are just, these just, they're just breasts. I mean, they're just breasts, they're tissue, they're just not important in my world for me it's like you're gonna you're gonna do this big battle right and if at the end of it i have a brand new boot pair of boobs to look forward to that's what i'm gonna look i'm gonna look beyond beyond these three months i have to i have to have something to look forward to right and so you know like dr Remen says i get to be the person that gives you something good out of something crappy happening to you and that's how i look at it i think mentally i'm pretty i'm okay um you know i i'm, I'm staying focused and busy the nordstrom's anniversary sale is coming up this week holy crap i feel very very behind i've probably had already filmed a video by now with you know i went and got the the magazine and looked it over about that you know i'm very very excited that i can throw up throw out some north anniversary videos before my surgery um i have been pre-filming like mad and of course i will uh 
I am gonna film everything that I am allowed to film. So that is where we're at guys. Um, as always, let me um, thank you so much for all your thoughts and prayers. Bring with me your stories. It always means the world to me. I have told you this. Um, probably update you one more time before surgery. All right, I'll see you then. Bye guys.